Shabbat Shalom. Good morning, everyone. I'm Rabbi Jenny Greenspan for Congregation Beth El Zedek here for our Shabbat morning Torah talk. So good to see a few already hopping on this morning. Um, this morning we will be discussing the Parsha Chaye Sarah, which means the life of Sarah, though it does ironically begin with her death. It marks the, how long her life lasted, hence the name Chaye Sarah. Uh, and Sarah lived a wonderful long life of 127 years. Um, and we are going to be looking at the bit of the Torah portion a little bit after her death and her burial that starts to move us into the next generation of our patriarchs and matriarchs. Um, so we'll get to that in just a moment. For now, I, I'll say good morning and Shabbat Shalom to my dad, Alex Romano. Shabbat Shalom to Jim Roth, to Melanie Henning, to Renee Fout. Alex Bender and Alan Hamburger. So good to see everybody. Shabbat Shalom and good morning. Um, I'm so glad that we are all here. Um, as usual, if you'd like to download a copy of the PDF of the Et Chaim Humash, the red Humash we'd normally be using in our pews, uh, go over to bez613.org and follow the menu from worship to virtual Shabbat resources and scroll down uh, where you will see our various options next to Torah Talk resources that will be listed as Etz Chaim, uh, will be the Torah portion for from the Chumash that you can take a look at with me. Um, and if you want to follow along, I will be starting on page 133 today, whether you're following in the PDF or a physical copy of Etz Chaim. If you are using a different copy of a Chumash, I will be in Genesis chapter 24, and I will be starting with verse 15. So if you're following in a different Humash, Genesis 24, 15, if you're with an Etz Chaim, will be on page 133. Um, and I'll also say Shabbat Shalom to Phyllis Luger and to Cheryl Tuf. Good to see you also joining us. So glad that so many are with us each Shabbat morning to learn a little bit of Torah. Before I dive into the text, I'll just give a little bit of context for where in the story of our patriarchs and matriarchs we are. This story takes place following the death of Sarah, Abraham's wife, and Abraham realizing his own age is getting up there um, and realizing at the loss of his wife that he wants to see and ensure that there is another generation and that his son Isaac will have a wife so that he can carry on the tradition and carry on the next steps for the people uh, so that we can indeed multiply to the, the numbers like the stars in the sky or the sands uh, in the sea, as was promised by God to Abraham a few weeks ago at the beginning of Lech Lecha. So in this Torah portion, Abraham takes his uh, tells his servant Eliezer to go back to the place where Abraham was originally from. So in Lech Lecha, we talked about Abraham leaving his land, the place he was born, his father's house. And now Abraham is telling Eliezer to go back to that place to find Isaac, his son, a wife. Uh, Abraham is concerned about taking a wife for Isaac from peoples immediately surrounding him in Canaan, worried about his uh, culture getting subsumed into theirs. So he is hoping to find Isaac a wife from uh, a culture that he knows a little bit better from his original birthplace. And Eliezer heads back there, and on his way, Eliezer prays for a specific type of woman for Isaac. Um, he confirms with Abraham that she should agree to come with him. So there's a, a this uh, Torah portion makes it very clear that a wife needs to, a woman needs to consent to be into a, in a relationship with a man, that the wife needs to consent to be married. Um, that is in there, and Eliezer asks Abraham, what do I do if no one consents to come back? And Abraham says, then then uh, don't take Isaac there. We'll come back and we'll figure it out later. Um, so on his way there, Eliezer is quite concerned about making sure he finds the right woman for Isaac. And that is where we begin our story together. So we, um, in the verses leading up to where we are, Eliezer is praying for a particular type of woman for Isaac. He is praying for one who is kind, who will jump up to serve others, and even gets as specific as, I want the young woman to be someone who, when I ask for water, jumps up and not only gives me water, but gives water also to all of my camels. That is what Eliezer prays for. Um, 
It should sound familiar if you've heard the story of how we've met Rebecca before, and if not, we're about to read it right now, starting with verse 15. He, we mean Eliezer here, had scarcely finished speaking when Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milka, the wife of, Abra of Abraham's brother Nahor, so he, she is family, uh, came out with her jar on her shoulder. The maiden was very beautiful, a virgin whom no man had known. She went down to the spring, filled her jar, and came up. The servant ran toward her, this is Abraham's servant, Eliezer, ran toward her and said, please, let me sip a little bit of water from your jar. Drink, my lord, she said, and she quickly lowered her jar upon her head and let him drink, uh, the jar that was upon her head to her hand, and let him drink. When she had let him drink his fill, she said, I will also draw for your camels until they finish drinking. Quickly emptying her jar into the trough, she ran back to the well to draw, and she drew for all his camels. The man, meanwhile, stood gazing at her, silently wondering whether the Lord had made his errand successful or not. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took a gold nose ring weighing a half shekel and two gold bands from her arms, ten shekels in weight, and he said, Whose daughter are you? So this is where he's realizing he has indeed met her. I I will not dive too deeply, but I point out the uh, the somewhat ironic. I said the immediately before the section we read, and if you want to go back and read it for yourself later, please do. Uh, Eliezer is very specific with what he is looking for and what he prays to God to find. And Rebecca does exactly, this is Rebecca, her name isn't stated yet, but this is Rebecca, exactly what Eliezer had prayed for, which does point to us that... Um, as humans, it is possible um, that sometimes we pray for things, we get exactly what we're asking for, and we don't recognize it. <laughs> Eliezer uh, takes a moment for him to believe that his uh, prayers have been answered. But I will actually want to focus on something that Rebecca does here. Uh, in Kabbalah, our patriarchs and matriarchs are seen to embody particular traits of God. Often, Abraham is seen as chesed, as loving kindness, as I like to call it, love in action, doing deeds of love, showing love through action. And Sarah is said to be the embodiment of deen, of judgment, of truth, of, of uh, structure. And the next generation, the genders flip on those two. And Isaac will be seen as deen, as structure, as needing law, and so he will, in, the, in next week's Torah portion, be the one to send his blessing down through his son's um, and Rebecca is seen as chesed, as love in action, um, because of this story. She is the one doing chesed here. Someone asked for a sip of water, and she gave him her full jug, and then watered all of her camels, all of his camels, which shows incredible physical strength to be drawing up that much water from the well and lugging that much water in the jugs. But I think it also shows an incredible emotional intelligence and an emotional intuition that we notice when we say that she embodies chesed, that she went above and beyond. But I think there's an, an even deeper emotional intelligence here. Um, I, will, I, will, uh, <laughs> I will admit that I am someone who often struggles to ask for help. And I don't always know when to ask for help and when I think I should be able to do whatever it is on my own. And often, I don't think I'm alone in this. If I do ask for help, I probably ask for less help than I need. And I think that Rebecca is showing the intuition that that might be true for Eliezer here. Eliezer says he's thirsty from his journey and can he have a sip of water to a stranger. He's asking a stranger if she can help him. If she can get him some water out of this well, he may not have the tools or the physical strength. We don't really know how old Eliezer is. Um, and so he asks for a little bit of help. And she has the emotional intelligence and the intuition to recognize he needs more help than he's asking for. Um, and I think that that is a lesson that we all often need to remember to take that from Rebecca, that people do not always know how to ask for help, and when they do, they don't always know how to ask for as much as they need, that it might take a lot more effort than you might imagine for someone to ask for a little bit of help. And so we should offer even more help than they ask for and offer help even before asked. 
um, this week I saw a few posts on Facebook that a few shared offering help to any who are struggling right now to get through this pandemic, to get through this difficult uh, physically health, physical health crisis that people are experiencing and financial health and emotional health crisis that many are experiencing. And I was so heartened to see people saying, I know it's hard to ask for help, especially in a culture, especially like our American culture, where we are trained to be, uh, to believe that we should be able to do anything. And I saw posts saying, I will give you help off the record, no questions asked, and we never need to discuss it in public again, because we've learned from the emotional intelligence of Rebecca, of our matriarch, who embodied chesed, who embodied love in action. We should offer help, whether we are asked for it or not. And when we are asked, we should see that probably more help than has been asked for needs to be given. And perhaps that's why Eliezer doesn't recognize his prayer being answered, even when it fit exactly. Because we are all so used to not asking for help and not getting help. And here Eliezer got exactly what he needed, even when he didn't ask for as much as he needed. I hope we all learn from Eliezer and from Rebecca and from our own colleagues and friends and congregation members uh, who offer help even when we haven't been asked. So my blessing for us this week is that we learn to be a little bit more like Eliezer, to at least try to ask for help when we need it, and more so that we learn to be like Rebecca, offering help whether or not it's been asked for and offering more help than we've been than has been requested. If we take this lesson and offer help in the world and move toward healing physically, emotionally, spiritually, and economically for all of those who might need it. We'll say Shabbat Shalom. Uh, Shabbat Shalom and thanks for joining to Jody Zucker and to Miles and Amanda Siegel. Um, so thank you so much, Cheryl, for the <laughs> affirmation. I think that uh, many of us feel that way, that it's not easy to ask for help, but it is so appreciated when we receive it. Uh, and so may we all ask and receive uh, for more help than we usually do. I'll say Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for joining me here. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on our live stream. I suppose I won't see you, but I look forward to you seeing me on our live stream where Cantor Melissa and I will offer our Shabbat morning services at 10 o'clock. You just need to go to Be Easy 613 and you'll hit the watch live. I believe we will be in the chapel this morning for when you're selecting which one. Shabbat Shalom, and I look forward to seeing you soon.